Element, the hot new electrolyte supplement that you never knew you needed. It is popping up everywhere. Element. 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 Go to drinkelement.com. That's drinklmnt.com slash Huberman. Head to drinklmnt.com slash modern wisdom. If you're new around here, my name is Adam McDonald. I'm a registered performance nutritionist with an MSc, a competitive natural bodybuilder, and a health and fitness coach for high performing men. In this channel, we break down complex health and fitness topics into practical applications. Now, I've spent thousands and thousands of supplements throughout my lifetime, most of that being completely wasted. So in this video, I'm trying to help you avoid that exact same situation. This isn't your typical element review. I'm not gonna talk about my 30 day experience or the taste, but what I am going to do is talk about its ingredients, whether those ingredients are actually effective and how they potentially may be harming some people. Element is an electrolyte supplement. It's marketed as something that you need to improve your overall health and your performance. It contains a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Electrolytes are minerals that are dissolved in water, meaning they can conduct an electrical current. There are several, but some are more important and in greater abundance in the body, specifically sodium, potassium, and chloride. They're essential, meaning that we need to get them through our diet in order to avoid disease and impaired immune function. When it comes to health and performance, they're all important, but sodium is the one that we need the most of. It's involved in fluid balance, water absorption and muscle contraction. Regular table salt, the white stuff that you put on your food, also known as sodium chloride, is made up of 40% sodium and the average American consumes 3,600 milligrams of it per day, which is far, far too much. And this is where we have the first problem with Element. On the Element website, there's lots of research articles backed up by cherry pick signs written by Element co-founder Rob Wolf, dismissing reports by the FDA and the WHO saying that we should look to reduce our sodium intake. He calls it their war on salt. In fact, on the Element homepage, the company uses data and graphs to push a narrative that we should be eating more salt, not less. And while yes, there is real research out there to show a correlation between too little sodium and increased cardiovascular disease risk, this research is majorly flawed. So I reached out to nutrition researcher, Dr. Alan Flanagan, who debunks nutrition quackery online, and he pointed me to this lecture, which explains his methodological flaw very well. The included data primarily assessed sodium using single spot collections. And this may misestimate salt intakes by nearly eight grams a day. Once you've one year repeated measure, that J-shaped curve is abolished. It's an artifact of this measurement error. We see this linear increase represented by the green line here. You could call their marketing unethical, dangerous, predatory, but most likely it's just simply misinterpreted. So from a health perspective, adding more sodium into your diet is probably not something you should be looking to do, especially when it costs you $45 for the equivalent of 30 grams. So what about performance? Well, we all know that we excrete sodium in our sweat, but in order to know how much sodium you excrete, we need to know how much you sweat. Across all sports, most people sweat at around a rate of one liter per hour or 0.24 gallons for my US friends. And since the function of sweat is to keep us cool, temperature conditions such as weather or clothing will massively affect that. But one major factor that many people don't realize is that our sweat is in fact hypotonic, meaning it is less salty than our blood. And this is true for most electrolytes. This means that when we sweat, the concentration of electrolytes per liter of blood actually increases. This is a protective mechanism employed by the body in order to prevent a serious condition called hyponatremia, a state in which our blood levels of sodium become overly diluted and can even lead to death. But hyponatremia occurs not when we get dehydrated, but when we drink far too much water over an extended period of time. A study of almost 500 participants from the 2002 Boston Marathon found that at the end of the race, 13% of runners had a blood sodium concentration so low they were classed as hyponatremic. But further analysis suggested that these runners had gained a substantial amount of water weight during the race when normally people end up finishing lighter. Whilst it may seem like a good strategy to prevent this would be to consume some electrolyte supplements like Element, research on the topic states, the most common exercise associated hyponatremia misconception is that low blood sodium is caused by too much sodium being lost through the sweat and not adequately replaced during exercise and that fluid overload remains the primary factor. So a very practical approach for most people would to simply just drink when you feel thirsty. In a 2018 systematic review looking at the effects of sodium intake on athletes performance the authors found that replacing sodium losses during exercise only showed a benefit in one out of five studies and participants were doing an Ironman triathlon which lasted over six hours. Now it makes sense that the longer we exercise and the more we sweat that replacing sodium might actually actually beneficial. If we're constantly drinking water containing no sodium, sweating out small amounts of sodium over hours and hours, eventually our sodium concentrations will start to drop. And this obviously becomes more important in very hot conditions when you sweat more, but currently there's no research on electrolyte intake in athletes training in hot conditions for a very long period of time. Dr. Alan McCubbin, who studies electrolyte intake in athletes states, it does not appear that sodium replacement during exercise is likely to positively impact on exercise performance unless it directly contributes to the athletes drinking more and therefore maintaining more optimal hydration throughout exercise.
exercise. Now in the hours after exercise, sodium does seem to have a slight benefit in that it helps you stay slightly more hydrated for longer, essentially because it stops you from urinating so much. But most people are gonna eat something after the exercise that has some salt in it anyway, so unless it's an extreme case of dehydration, there doesn't seem to be much case or need for supplementation. Sodium ingested with glucose may help stimulate glucose uptake into the intestines, but research is inconclusive. And as we've seen, it doesn't really have any practical impacts on performance outcomes anyway. Now you'll notice I didn't talk much about potassium or magnesium, both of which are really important in the body. However, there's literally zero evidence supporting their intake during exercise. Two apricots or half a banana contains the same amount of potassium as one sachet of element. And for magnesium, one serving of nuts, seeds, or leafy greens is gonna have around the same amount. So if electrolyte supplements are largely a waste of money, why is it being promoted? The honest answer is, I don't know, but I can only guess. Firstly, it sounds like it makes sense. Electrolytes are vital for life, therefore supplementing with them must be good, right? Second, and probably just as important, the commission. Now, I haven't been able to find out exactly what the commission rates are for Element. I did email them, but they didn't tell me the exact amounts in the email. But according to Shopify, affiliate commission rates are usually between five and 50%. In a previous video, I noted that the commission rates for Athletic Greens were around 30%. So I assume that this is gonna be roughly the same, if not more. When you have big name podcasters with over a million subs like Andrew Huberman or Chris Williamson promoting it, it's going to massively increase your brand. In fact, I'd never heard of it before hearing about it on the Modern Wisdom podcast. At $45 a pack, I'm sure they're earning multiple thousands per episode at minimum. So what's the alternative? Well, if your goal is just to improve your health, I personally wouldn't recommend it at all. The chances are you're highly unlikely to be at risk of sodium deficiency. And if you are simply adding some salt to your food, we'll fix that. If you're an athlete, there may be no harm in using Element when you work out, particularly if you're training for a very long period of time in very hot conditions. But this statement isn't necessarily backed up by science. If you do want to add some electrolytes to your training, a simple pinch or two of table salt to your water with some water flavoring will be just as good and about a thousand times cheaper when comparing gram for gram. And the additional potassium and magnesium are trivial at best. If you want to stay hydrated, just drink water. And if you want to step up your training, consider adding some simple carbohydrates to that water. As always, if you're looking to maximize your health and performance, eat a well-balanced diet, plenty of fruits and vegetables. And if you found this video informative, you might like the one that I made on Athletic Greens. If you're still around and you're interested in getting help from me with your nutrition, I invite you to check out the link below this video.